Exactly. This pop is sort of inconceivable yesterday. I mean, we've just watched this company run up and up and up. I mean, a month or two ago, the idea that they were going to go at $30 billion was seen as somewhat of a victory. I mean, they back in March, Brian Chesky was out raising money at double digit interest rates to kind of save the company. So the fact that he was sort of back to where he was before the pandemic, 30 billion was looking like a good um, IPO. And the fact that it's, I mean, going to be near a hundred billion today is sort of something. Something is going on. I mean, there's there's clearly excitement around this company, but there's also I mean, you've been talking about it today. I mean, just crazy euphoria around the IPO market in general. Yeah. And Jared, I want to bring you in on that note. Uh, again, about $145, the latest indication price for Airbnb. Let's call that a $90 billion market cap. When you initiated out, your outperform last week with 135, that was a year-end 2021 target. So why are we pulling all of that forward to today? What does that valuation tell you? And if you put an outperform on it before, what do you do with it now? Hi, Kelly. Thanks for having me on. You know, we, we initiated last night. Um, you know, I think ultimately this is a really attractive investable story in both the near term and the long term. In the near term, you have a, a really good leisure travel, pent up leisure travel recovery. And Airbnb is really one of the rare large cap names, I think, to play that theme without having to deal with, you know, the business travel risk that you have at Marriott and Hilton and, and some of the other large hotel C-Corps. And then over the longer term, you have a really good uh, secular story where, you know, Airbnb is going to be a market share taker over the longer term. And I think COVID-19 has probably accelerated that opportunity where work from home, frankly, becomes really work from any home. So, you know, ultimately, the way we look at this is this is a multi-year story. Uh, we, you know, obviously, the stock hasn't even opened yet. We don't we don't know how it's going to how it's going to trade here. But we like it over right, the long term. That's my point. Yeah. Everything that you're saying was true last night. Nothing's changed between last night and today. It's not It's not like the vaccine news broke between last night and today. It's not like Congress passed the stimulus package between last night and today. It's not like, you know, I'm sure nothing's changed between last night and today. And it's gone from a $47 billion company to a $90 billion company. So what does that have to do with any of this commentary? Yeah, well, I think, you know, we titled our initiation Dream Big because ultimately, I don't think anybody really understands how big this company could become, right? This is a company that has 2% of their TAM, 2% market share of the, of the TAM. We don't know how big the margins could be. We don't know the adjacent spaces opportunity, whether that's experiences or getting into the OTA field or, you know, really the, the brand is powerful to where they can leverage that and, and they can probably find other additional revenue sources from that. So I think that's what, you know, the market's also looking at is we just don't know how big this could become over the longer term. Maureen, both Airbnb and DoorDash use the hybrid auction process. It, look, it, if it was meant to get them top dollar, it certainly didn't do that. Um, what, what do you think the real purpose of that was? I mean, it, it's fascinating that you say that. I mean, it was really the idea was to mitigate a pop. And these are huge companies. So the fact that they're popping, I mean, it's a lot of money to essentially double the price. What I was hearing about these hybrid auction processes was that it was easy. You could see the demand above the price range that they would put out there. It was a little bit easier to see the granularity of what people would put in orders. Clearly, it hasn't helped. I mean, it's it's pretty big for any company to double, especially one at this size. So I think, I mean, there's a question of, you know, how well, how good of a job are they doing versus the regular process? If this is, if this is the outcome that we're seeing and all the money left on the table, what you're saying, the, the discrepancy between what retail investors will probably pay today and what long what the people who got it this last night. But also, yeah, it's, there's also one other question that you can only raise it so much over the course of this of a week and a half roadshow. So they the underwriters basically only had one chance to raise the price. And then you could only really price 20 percent on top of that. So in the case of Airbnb, they left a couple of dollars on the table above this first price raise range. Still, it was obviously wildly off. But the question is, you know, yeah, they and both, sorry, go ahead, Kelly. No, no, no please go ahead, finish the thought. I was gonna say just, uh, you know, in both companies, it, you have to ask the question, I mean, what is real? I mean, is this a true valuation? Is this something going on in the market over the next day or two? So I think 
there is at least something that I think both companies have expressed to their underwriters and others is that they were a little wary of totally pricing up to where demand is because they want, you know, especially Airbnb, the next couple of months could be pretty bumpy for them. I think there's a ton of optimism about where they're going to go in the travel industry once everything rebounds. But, you know, depending on what the lockdowns are like in the next few months, I mean, revenue could still really dip. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.